Barack Obama recently became the first sitting president to ever visit one of these, an American prison. And the president used the occasion to call out a particularly poorly designed policy at the heart of our criminal justice system. A primary driver of this mass incarceration uh, phenomenon is uh, our drug laws, our mandatory minimum sentencing around drug laws. Mandatory minimums require judges to hand out specific sentences for certain crimes deemed uniquely harmful to society. So under federal law, using, say, a chemical weapon to kill someone automatically gets you life in prison. Or, and this is true, tampering with the telegraph line will get you five years. Federal minimums are supplemented by state laws. Louisiana, for instance, requires a four-year prison sentence for LSD possession. But the species of minimums now being singled out for reform were birthed at the height of the drug war in the mid-80s. A drug so pure and so strong might just as well be called crack of doom. I think the package we brought forward addresses a quote, drug problem. In 1986, Congress passed a sprawling criminal justice bill, a central feature of which was a mandatory sentencing disparity punishing crack violations much more harshly than those for powder cocaine. You can have 500 grams of powder and still get probation. Five grams of crack, you get five years mandatory minimum. That difference has had catastrophically racially disparate effects. 80% of the crack defendants were African American. These effects have prompted critics to decry excessive crack minimums as purely the products of Reagan era white supremacy. But that narrative is ever so slightly complicated by this. You should not allow people to be able to distribute this poison without fear. Congressman Rangel, along with much of the black political leadership, was a key advocate for erecting these laws in the first place. They should be caged like wild animals because that's what they are. We are not going to be put back into slavery by our own people. This minimum sentencing regime has proven to be a grotesque case study in unintended consequences. There are thousands of stories just like this. Weldon Angelos was a 22-year-old aspiring music producer and father of two young boys. <laughs> someone gets snapped up on a low-level, non-violent drug offense. His crime? Carrying a gun and selling 24 ounces of pot. The presiding judge is forced to apply a devastating arithmetic in which minor violations exponentially add up to a gigantic prison term. Weldon Angelos was sent to prison for 55 years. I think well, that wasn't the right thing to do, and the system forced me to do it. That a 55-year sentence is not going to do anything more than a 5- or 10-year sentence would have done except for my entire life. Fortunately, the notion that harsh minimums could seriously dampen the drug trade has collapsed in light of the manifest failures of the drug war. And that's opened up real political space for serious bipartisan reform. We've got a lot of people in prison, uh, frankly, that really, in my view, I uh, really don't need to be there. And the few remaining defenders of the status quo have been left to regurgitate magnificently unpersuasive talking points like this. Mandatory minimums ensure that the right sentences are going to the, um, uh, are equate to the level of violator that we are, uh, we are going after.